that promote them series. Some of the basic criteria of the first genocide. This is kind of just. Today we'll try to do a and other tests that might have done previously. And we'll do that in a more sophisticated form. But let's consider a series. This is basically one of our exceptions are good. So, what you can say about convergence or the of this series? Good convert. Good convert. Good convert. Good convert. Good convert. Good convert. Good Okay, so how can I show that this is convergent? So I can show that basically by you know black functions and these kind of things that we have learned previously. Consider SN, which is partial sum. So maybe. So give me a series which is bigger than each of these terms. So otherwise, this is one plus one over two factorial, one over two factorial. Can you give me a series which is strictly bigger than this? And it is convergent as well. One option. 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 One the series sum 1 over n is itself not convergent. It's not going to do a fairly huge of us. So we want to kind of bound it by something which is convergent. I hope that we, we did this last time that phi 1 over n series formed by 1 over n is not convergent. Huh? So harmonic series diverges out. Diverges slowly, but it diverges out eventually. Okay, so how about how about saying this that one is smaller than two? Okay. It to be one plus one as well. So that there should be two things. Okay. Are we starting it from the okay, so if we start from zero? Then we're gonna have this side. I could have one plus one and one over, so it's like a one dot two, so which is going to be smaller than, I said that this is going to be smaller than, this sum is going to be smaller than one over two square. Yes, sir. I mean, one over two, sorry. One over two, sir. And this term, I can say this is dominated by one over four, one over two square, and so on and so forth. So, can you give me? Then which term is going to dominate this term? K power K. Power. Two power K. Two power K. Two power K. Are you sure? So if you have a three here, you have a two here. If you have a four here, you're going to have three here. K minus one. K minus one. This is going to be the uh, is this a convergent series? It's a geometric series. Okay. It converges out. Mm -hmm. so if it is converges out, this guy is going to convert that. Okay. Second thing that we can 
immediately observe is that this guy is strictly smaller than 3 as well. So it can't go beyond 3. Mm -hmm. Can't go beyond 3. Mm -hmm. so, so if this series is convergent, I'm going to give it a name actually. And that name is E. And so obviously this is going to converge, so converge is going to converge to sum up to some number. We are representing that number by each kind of what we mean by Now we can investigate about E that what is this number E? It starts from zero or one? Yes. Okay, so one of the things we write that I'm not going to do is that you can show that you have an n goes to infinity, 1 plus 1 over n raised to n is equal to what? Same as 7 e. So in other words, another way to basically come up with this is e. This is something elementary, might have done in your school level things for okay. okay. so, so, so what I'm saying is that if this series is convergent then whatever the limit of this series is okay. the next thing that I'm interested in is to show that this E is an irrational number okay. Interesting, which is that he is irrational. And it's kind of irrational which is not even algebraic. Because you can't find a polynomial with rational coefficient whose solution is E. It's a transcendental function. Transcendental something which is beyond algebra, transcends algebra. Rational So this irrational is equal to the sum of rationals, you mean? Some of rational, but it's converging. you have this very strange creature. Okay. So this this sum is not really a sum actually. I mean, we, we know that this is a symbolism actually. Okay, it's a symbol. It's not really a infinite sum because there's no meaning of taking something. You know, so we have given it a meaning. So in that sense, we are saying that okay, you know, this this object, this sum. Which means that, which has a specific meaning, is going to give you. So in other words, I, I can I can call it that. Okay, so this series is convergent, and it converges to E. Okay, and whatever the limit of that is, so in other words, what we are saying is that these essence are going to converge to E. Okay, where as n goes to infinity, okay, and we know that if these partial sums are going to converge to that some number, we can, okay, they are going to converge to something, and that something is we are calling it E. Okay, so we are not using our preconception of E. We are saying that okay, whatever is the limit of this partial sum is going to be E. And and we know that if the partial sums are converging to some number, you know, I, I can assign this symbol the same number again. This guy is the edge. Anyway, so the next thing is E irrational. So we can investigate further about this number E that it's not rational. Okay. And in order to do so, I invite you to the this guy. What will this guy? Zero. So SN is a partial sum. Well, that's a sum from zero to infinity. So you're subtracting this much from this. So what are you going to have? 
you're going to have something like 1 over n plus 1 to factorial two factorial and so on and so forth. Agree? So roughly you can uh, I have this object and I want to bound it by something. This kind of more sensible. Can I say that this guy is smaller than 1 over n plus 1 factorial? 1 plus n plus 1 plus 1 over n plus 2 square and so on and so forth. I'll leave that, that why this should be. What is e made of So it's from 0 to infinity. And what is Sn? It's 0 to n. So from this, you are taking out this much. So what's going to remain actually? So it's, it's going, the sum is going to start from n plus 1. Goes on with it. And then I'm saying that this is bounded by this. Why this should be the case? Just think about it. The first term is same as this one. And if you multiply this with this, is this number big or, you know? This which denominator is bigger actually? This denominator? That denominator. That denominator is bigger. So in other words, this number is going to be bigger than this. So you're taking the reciprocal. The denominator is bigger than. Similarly, this third term is going to be the third term here. It is going to be. It's a bit trickier, but still have. Is it making sense? Okay. Now, if this is the case, then can I say that this guy is nothing but 1 over n factorial times n? One over n factorial factor. Why this should be the case? So if this is the case, assume that this one is like an entity is okay by yourself. Then we have something very interesting. That interesting thing is Know that this number is bigger than zero. Agree? And therefore, if I multiply, you know, this whole inequality, so what we get is zero e minus s n is smaller than one over n factorial. So this means that this is this is same as zero less than n factorial times e minus s n less than one over n. Now we can say that, okay, we can see that, that if this is true, then E cannot be rational. This inequality is true, which is certainly true, we have dragged it. E cannot be rational, just think about it. 
So if if I say that E is some P over Q rational number minus S N is certainly rational. Yes, yes. Just a simple sum. It's a rational number. So you have this number which is rational, and you are multiplying it with n factorial. What do you think that what's going to happen? My claim. Just think about it. That if you multiply n factorial with this guy, what are you going to have? So you're going to remain with a rational number. Not a rational number, but exactly the integer actually. So if this is an integer, can you have an integer between zero and one more? No, sir. Why this would be an integer? Is this a sense this You take E, multiply it with the fan factor. Then you're going to see that this is going to turn out to You multiply. So, so in other words, like, okay, you know, check these small calculations. Okay, you can see that this is visually an integer. So, if this is an integer, that's a troublemaking thing. Then we found an integer between 0 and 1. Okay, which is not possible. Put this little in there and so on. You can see that this E is an irrational number. In other words, this E converges to something which is not much. Okay? Taking a little sign. This is the default sign. This little in there. Go take take things. Before proceeding further, like so, over the middle of the vision, keep my body. Limb soup, and then we go for uh, X results. As a quick remark, a remark on this observation. This is only N0. Quick remark. That quick remark is that if I take something bigger than then so okay. As n goes to infinity of the same point an, then you can always find an n step that exists n such that as n is smaller than x for all n bigger than the equal. So what we are saying that imagine no, it's not lost. So yes, x is equal to x is bigger than limbsu. If if I have a number which is bigger than limbsu, then there must be an instant. After that, all the terms of the sequence are going to be low basically on this step. Take it. Take it. Why this should be the case? Which one is it? What do you 
the lens from the policy. That's how it goes. So what is going to be the lips? Then film of Supreme. So you need to take in for months first. Supreme. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, in for months. Okay. You can't, you can't actually show it. <laughs> okay, on picture because it's difficult because you need to take the in from after every time. So, if I say that, okay, these are some things that come up. So, here the infimum is. So supremum or infimum? Huh? Supremum or infimum? Infimum or So, the infimum. We'll take supremum and then ah, we'll okay. take so the infimum. We'll take the supremum and then infimum. So, in this picture, which one is the bigger supremum? Huh? So, so, this one. Biggest of them. That's from the first supremum. And if we think from the second term point of view, which one is bigger? This. Still something else. And from this term point of view, still she matters. In this particular picture, this guy looks like that it is. If it, it's not saying that this sequence is converging to this. So obviously, I mean, within this picture, if you take the, the infimum of these supremums, it's going to be itself. Right? So what we are saying that, imagine I have a number which is bigger than this limb soup pattern. So if it is bigger than limb soup, then there must be an instant in this sequence. After that instant, all of the terms of the sequence are going to be below this number. So which is this instant in this picture? It's really the you know, first instant. Um, so I begin from here and all terms are Yes. So, one of them. So, is it not always the case? No, 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 I'm not saying that. But, sir, these terms are of sequence. Uh -huh. And we're talking about SN here. Okay. SN is ah, partial yeah. sum. Is it? So, no, no, no. Let me say that, okay, if you have the limb soup and something bigger than limb soup, that there must be some instant after, okay, sometime after which all terms of the sequence are going below that, okay, that's what we say, continue to prove it. How can we show it actually? What should be the strategy? Okay. Imagine, imagine this holds and this does not. That's what you can say. Imagine this holds, but this will not push that. This will not push. So let's say that. So let x is bigger than limb soup of a n. Let's say that. This AN is always bigger than the original one. There is no such end universe for all n. Now, why that's a trouble making this? Way? Why that's a trouble making this way? Sir? So in other words, you are saying We are saying that this these terms are bigger than I equal to bigger than Okay. Of K N for all the terms. Is this a sensible statement? In this sense.
If yes, why this part of what? Just, just think about it. This is true for all and actually. Because the contradiction is that what is going to be the negation of this is here. So if you are saying that there exists and for which this is true, then the negation is going to be there is no such and for which this is true. Hence the opposite is true but for all and actually. So, so this thing is, so in other words, all terms of the sequence are bigger than or equal to, you know, if, even if you have equality, you know, you might have some chance to go out. But we are saying that all terms are strictly bigger than the limb sequence, that's actually love. Thank you. So reaching to a troublemaking thing. There can be other ways. You can, you can, if you want to see Rudin, you can see 3.17 here. Roughly, I'm just giving you a sketch that this shouldn't happen. Okay? And I'm going to use this fact many times. Okay? What if, what if this remark is telling me that if I have something bigger than lens 2, then there must be some lens 2. After that, all terms of the sequence are going to be below that. Okay. Okay. So, let's, let's prove what is so called uh, root test. What is the root test? Do you remember root test? Anyone? I got that this. So you said that given you have a series, okay, and you put alpha or maybe R, okay, to be the limit as approaches to infinity. And to the fourth, a L. I'm writing your kind of a statement that you have let me just take. So, so, so you're going to say that if, so it's like you compute the limit of the nth root of absolute of a and active term with biology. So if alpha is smaller than 1, then some a n converges, okay, and we get that if alpha is bigger than 1, some is converges, and c is that if alpha is 1, so, so, so this test is inconclusive actually. The test is inconclusive. In other words, what is the meaning of this? This means that if alpha is 1, you can have series which converge and you can have series which converge. But if this happens with certainty, so this was something that you learned in maybe calculus courses and maybe you know some of the school level things. Okay, so this was about learning actually, but we want to make it make this result more stronger. So if we want to make results more stronger, what we need to do? We need to relax the assumptions. Okay, so for a series. It's not necessary that always you know, the limit exists, but we know that the limits always exist. We are making assumptions less relaxed. If limit exists, it's going to be same as the limb soup. But the limb soup is always going to exist. So in other words, you don't need limit to 
have a conclusion about the convergence or divergence of series. You can just have limb soup and you can tell them whether it converges or So, we are going to go one step ahead with more sophisticated. So, you can have a limit here, must say that. Okay. But if you just put limit, you are restricting your rhythm.